Who is Helen Petusis Harris and why am I talking about her today? Helen Petusis Harris is a New Zealand vaccinologist and associate professor in the Department of General Practice and Primary Health Care at the University of Auckland. She has been involved in research related to vaccination in New Zealand since 1998, with her main areas of focus being vaccine safety and effectiveness. Petusis Harris has had a variety of lead roles in New Zealand and international organisations that focus on vaccination and is a regular media spokesperson in this field, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. Petusis Harris was a member of the World Health Organisation Global Advisory Committee on Vaccine Safety back in 2017. She was a chair of that committee from 2018 to 2020. In the same time frame, she was elected member of the International Brighton Collaboration Science Board and from 2017 has had a governance role on the executive board of the Global Vaccine Data Network. As from 2020, Helen Petusis Harris has been a member of the COVID-19 Immunisation Implementa Implementation Advisory Group, which provides advice for the New Zealand Ministry of Health to implement the COVID-19 immunisation campaign and part of the COVID-19 Vaccine Technical Advisory Group. Now, the reason I'm talking about Helen Petusis Harris is because I'm going to show you a few moments from her interview with Sean Plunkett from The Platform. Now, she herself admits in a few places that mistakes have been made. Um, and most, most specifically, mistakes have been made which potentially contributed to the death of Rory Nairn, who died of myocarditis in November 2021. Can I ask you, has the information that we have got about adverse reactions and side effects from the vaccine been in line with what we expected? Yeah, I think I think we've been very, very open about the side effects. Um, but I also think that uh, that we might not have done a very good job of getting this, this, some of the messages through right to the front line. So now we have Helen Petusis Harris, who is admitting that she does not believe that health professionals and those vaccinating New Zealanders were either themselves fully aware of all the risks of the vaccination or weren't themselves providing the information necessary for all New Zealanders to fully understand what all the risks were and what to look out for. Now, I myself was vaccinated in May and June in 2021. Now, I do not recall once even having myocarditis or pericarditis mentioned to me at all. Now, I do not doubt it was likely listed on a sheet I was given. But considering people in my age group are the highest risk of myocarditis and pericarditis following vaccination, that is a very, very concerning thing. Now, now we come to Rory Nairn, who died in November 2021, after receiving his first dose in November 2021. Now, the reason that's concerning is because if Helen Petusis Harris who's essentially the most educated and informed person in New Zealand regarding vaccine and vaccine safety, does not believe that New Zealanders were being adequately informed in what to look out for, then clearly Rory Nairn's death was avoidable. Because clearly, had he had been adequately informed or adequately provided the information of what to look out for, which she is doubtful was happening to the level it needed to be, then clearly that could have had a massive impact on whether he'd be here today. And that is on the government. So, you know, we've had all these conversations in the media, uh, like programs like this, and we've talked about myocarditis since probably about April last year. Yeah. Now, on this point, she may be right. Perhaps the media and other individuals were making us aware of myocarditis and pericarditis from about April in 2021. I wouldn't personally know. I was in a living environment where I didn't really have access to all that much media. Um, however, do you recall hearing much about myocarditis or pericarditis? Do you recall being gaslighted as to the effects in the time period from April last year to present day? Do you recall being gaslighted as to what the risk was? Do you recall being told that the risk of myocarditis from the virus itself 
far, far outweighs the risk of myocarditis from the vaccine. Do you recall that? Because that's typically the only coverage I am ever recall hearing. The fact was, wasn't it, with the speed at which the Pfizer vaccine, in fact, all the vaccines were developed, we were going to have to, and I perhaps use the rather blunt term, someone was going to have to take one for the team, given the time frame in which these vaccines were developed. I don't think the speed at which we got the vaccine has anything to do with it. Helen's next point is very fascinating because it essentially says she does not believe that the time frame in which the COVID-19 Pfizer vaccine or any of the other ones for that matter were developed had an impact on what we knew in regards to safety. Now, later in the video, she contradicts this and I encourage you to go watch the thing in full. It's about 20 to 25 minutes. Now, she explains that all the data we need to know about myocarditis, the risks, the certain age groups, the demographic breakdown of who's more at risk for whatnot, we didn't have any of that data when we approved the vaccination for mass rollout in New Zealand. We did not have that. And yet, she says, the speed in which it was developed isn't a problem. Now, the only reason we didn't have that data was because it was developed quickly and it was approved without going through the strenuous and some often laborious process on ensuring it's safe from people who are voluntarily allowing themselves to be vaccinated. Instead, no, what did we do? We approved the vaccination for mass use before we learned about the myocarditis risk. Then once we learned about the myocarditis risk, we decided she'll be right anyway. But we did that without actually having any data, well, not enough data at least, about what kind of risk myocarditis would pose to certain demographics. And we simply could not do that because of the speed in which it was created. So now you have Helen Petusis Harris just gaslighting New Zealand. So it was a matter of um, you know, watching for this um, very closely as it was rolled out. This, this is an event that was picked up quite early on once the vaccine started going into the younger age groups. Mm. Um, and, and the alerts, et cetera, ensued. Because the risk, the, the risk um, of death from this event is exquisitely rare. I mean... Now, according to the NIH National Library of Medicine and National Centre for Biotechnology Information, myocarditis has a mortality rate of 20% within two years and 50% within five years. Now, that is a far cry from rare as so eloquently put by Helen Petutis Harris. And oh, maybe, wow. maybe the tragedy here is that being aware of the symptoms and conveying those to him more clearly might have led to a different outcome. Yeah, well, I, I, yeah, exactly. I think this is, this is actually, the, actually the key point. And now here we have Helen Petutis Harris admitting that had Rory Nairn been more properly educated and informed in regards to the risks of myocarditis and what to look out for, he very well could be here with us and his family today. Or whatever, but myocarditis is, is, is more likely after, you know, having an infection. But of course, she couldn't stop there. And the video actually goes on for much, much longer, but I'll leave it at this final point, which is the most crucial point, which is... Vaccine-induced myocarditis for particular demographics is far in excess of infection-induced myocarditis. And that goes for people such as Rory Nairn. Now, not even a little bit goes. I mean, it really goes. According to a 23 million participant Scandinavian study post in the journal of the American Medical Association, it is very, very bad. Now, what that uncovered was for 16 to 24-year-old males, Rory Nairn being one, the risk of myocarditis following COVID-19 infection was 13.7 per million. Now, if you had one dose of the Pfizer jab, such as he did, that risk is 15 per million. 
Now, that's a slight increase, but given myocarditis is very, very uh, severe, and given you're going to catch COVID with or without the vaccine, is it, for someone of Rory Nan's age, fitness, and so on, acceptable that he was even suggested to take it? Because it's even worse for those who've had more than one jab. Because that goes from 15 per million to a second jab increasing it to 55 per million. Now, they don't have data for what it is if you've had a booster or two. Now, that could be shocking. But this is just for Pfizer. Now, the statistics for the Moderna are even worse. They are more around the range of 20-odd per million for one, and for the second dose, in excess of 180 per million. All to combat a virus which has a 13.7 per million chance of myocarditis in 16 to 24-year-old males, who are otherwise unlikely to be too phased by the virus anyway. And ultimately, this brings me to my final point, which was Rory Nairn, according to his fiance, felt he needed to be vaccinated because of mandates. Mandates which Helen Petusis Harris, also in this video, says she would do again.